Hello, Fatima. Nevis is here. Gordon is here. You can hear me. How about see me? Clearly hear me? See me? Good. Now that that's out of the way, uh, I'm here to welcome our esteemed presenter, Dr. Nellie Deutsch, who I believe is with us. I think I just saw her name there, so I'm going to bring her in right away so we can both be up here and welcome you. Let me just find her amongst uh, the crowd here. Ooh, lots of people in here today, as I was hoping. Let's enable Dr. Nellie D to come on in. There she is. Hi. <laughs> we have uh, Dalel is here. Excellent. Shakti's here. And you just lots of facilitators. <laughs> Wonderful. Ah, Professor Tony is here from Turkey. Vanessa's here from Brazil. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I don't know if you noticed, uh, Dr. Nelly, but um, I'm I'm trying to one up you here with the books. Look, I think I think I've got your your library beat today. You know, normally I have nothing, and look, overnight, it's transformational it's things happening here, library wise. It's not my room. <laughs> There's an echo. <laughs> Uh, I just decided to set this up as a prop today because I knew you had books behind you, so I, I wanted to I wanted to show you what I got. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm on the road. Does anyone want to guess where I am? I think Dr. Nelly knows. I'm, I'll give you I'll give you a hint. I'm with, I'm at a a presenter's house. It's not Dr. Nelly's. That would be very cool. But I am, I'll, I'll let you think about that. In the meantime, what countries do we have here? Let's represent. Romania is in the house. Greece, Panama, that's three. Serbia, four. Bulgaria, five. Morocco, six. Brazil, seven. Argentina, eight. USA, nine. Peru, ten. Tunisia, eleven. Oh, it's going to be fast. Germany, Egypt, can't count anymore. Pakistan, wow. Wonderful, wonderful. This is a rescheduled class. Uh, we were not able to have it the last time because of some technical difficulties. Dr. Nelly has uh, graciously agreed to do it again. Of course she would. And here she is. There was some really amazing action on the pre-class questions that Dr. Nelly posed to us. Uh, that was a few days ago, but then I posted it again, the new class, and there was a lot of action there again. So I think she asked some really great questions. Uh, some of you have had the chance to look at the slides because uh, we put them up when we couldn't have the first session. Uh, Dr. Nelly, you've made a few changes, is that right, to the presentation? And, of course, she hasn't given the presentation. So you've had a nice little preview. Now it's time for the real deal, Dr. Nelly Deutsch. Welcome sounds like a funny thing to do. How can I welcome you to WizIQ? You are WizIQ. Uh, hello. We love you. Thank you for being here. Take it away. Dr. Nelly Deutsch, everybody. Thank you so much, Jason, everybody. Thank you for coming to this session. And um, actually, I don't even know what I have to uh, share with you. Uh, except myself, because you guys have uh, have it all. I've been going through your uh, comments uh, to the pre-task, and it's just amazing. I, I, I'm just learning. Just like Jennifer said, there's more learning from the participants than we can actually give you. So, Jace, I think we can just uh, have you sing, and um, I got nothing to say. Jace, you got it? Like, everybody's just amazing. I mean, the things you wrote, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, I, I want to come wrong. back and say hi again. No. Uh, I want to steal your thunder. Give me the... Yeah, Jace, uh, what's the result of the uh, of the poll? It's so loud. Is it me? Am I am I too loud? Let me lower the volume. 
Oh, oh my volume was oh, full. Was oh my, no, it's me, it's me. No, 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 it's me, it's me. I had it full blast. Sorry. No, it's not you. It was me. Sorry. I was too loud. I just saw that. We have results of a poll that Dr. Nelly is asking. Some people are still uh, uh, answering. So just one thing. It, it is almost seems like a cliche when you hear presenters like what say what Nelly said or I say like, oh, we're learning just as much as you. But you have to really put yourselves in our shoes for this type of course. It's a new opportunity for everyone. But as far as you know, sharing knowledge, information, not the least of which. Uh, it's, it, it's new for us. So we're constantly stopping and reflecting and like, wow, this is, there's nothing that compares to this as far as our learning and what, uh, teachers are doing out there. So, you know, it's, it's, it's so reciprocated on a continuous basis. Uh, uh, speaking of sharing information, we have two options. For Nelly's question, what do you do more, listen or talk? Anyone want to guess? I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. One of them is getting a lot more votes than the other. <laughs> what do you, what do you think? <laughs> you think it's talk? You want me to share the results, Dr. Nelly? Mm -hmm. Should we go ahead and share them? Okay. Pretty okay, please. Let's do that. Oh, you got it. You don't so, even need to uh, pretty please with me. <laughs> the option is, uh, okay, it comes out for listening. Listening, oh, people are still voting. But it's like 70% listening. Okay, hmm. so Do you believe them? I think that's, well, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's, <laughs> let's talk. Let's all talk. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. All right, everybody. So let's uh, let's get started here. All right. So I just added something in the chat. I hope you got it. It's TTTT. That's what I learned. I mean, I learned a lot of things, but that's one of the things that really got me thinking. Do you have any idea what TTT is? Well, it stands for some things that one of the uh, participants added in the uh, pre task and yeah you got it so you've been reading each other's thing very very good that's right i think it's delili is that delil were you the one yes and and i think that's really really important so yes jason this is something that one of the participants had added and it stands for exactly that it's uh, it's wonderful. It's teacher talking time, Jason. Teacher talking time. Now you really have to add that to one of your uh, uh, chants or raps. Okay, uh, TTT. That's what it's all about. Teacher talking time. All right. So the question, of course, was, are you a good listener? Okay. And um, when we talk about listening, and this is about listening right now. So let me ask you, are you using the chat box the way I usually use it? Now, if you've been watching me for the past couple of uh, presentations, what did you notice about Nelly or integrating technology for active lifelong learning? You must have noticed something kind of uh, very, very protrusive about this presenter. Anything that comes to mind? Well. Anything? Well, I'll let you uh, think about it as we go. So if you're a good listener, do you think of other things while someone is talking? <laughs> Speak your mind, okay, okay, keep them coming. Uh, do you doodle, shuffle papers, look elsewhere when somebody's talking? Do you silently argue with a speaker and oh, this is not what this is, you know, in your head? but you're very polite and you don't do it out loud, of course. Do you select and choose what you like? Well, I like this, V for this, no, 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 no. V for this, no for this, yes for this, no for that. Keep coming with the yeses. Uh, do you find it boring? Oh, 
you know, like, oh my gosh, if I could just go to bed right now, right? Well, probably no, 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 but that's okay. Do you feel lifeless? Like, God, is this going to go on? Do you uh, interrupt? Do you complete sentences in your head? Like, okay, yeah, yeah. And you complete the sentence because you always know what's going to come. Uh, do you criticize silently, of course, because we're all very polite um, on their voice, on the way they look? Okay, Jason put the books in the back, right? We got to look good. Here, um, okay, let me add another pair of glasses, maybe. Is this better? Or a hat, or, you know, something? So, do you criticize silently their voice, the way they look, their way of talking? Yeah, right. And do you ask them to please, could you repeat when they ask you a question in the middle of the conversation? If you've given a lot of yeses and you think you're a good listener, you better think twice, all right? Because most of us think we're great listeners. And, and that was very obvious in the poll that 70%, well, actually it's even more, of the population think they're great listeners. Well, some of the suggestions are that you can show interest, but really show interest. In other words, become interested, and you've given a lot of these ideas. Actually, as I said, uh, most of what I'm going to be talking about, um, you've already said, which is great, because that was the idea behind the pre-task. The idea was to get you thinking and for you to come up with whatever I'm going to be talking about. All right. So interest, empathy, focus on them. Can you focus on me? I can't focus on you. Um, okay. This is a problem online, of course. Keep silent. <laughs> Anybody silent out there? I wouldn't say you're silent because you're chatting away in the chat box. Okay, except the speaker. Now, this isn't easy when they're not good looking, they sound horrible. Um, you know, we're looking at them. And remember that it's not about you. Whoever is talking has the floor, it's really about them. And that's what this lecture like presentation is about. It's about me, right? It's about me and what I have to say, even though what you have to say was great and I really liked it and I wish we could change places. You know, I would like all of you, you know, all, I don't know how many, Jason, maybe a thousand, two thousand of you to come up here and, and talk about the wonderful responses that you gave. And I'm looking at them in another computer here because they were amazing. But this is about me right now. And we got to remember that whoever is talking, it's about them. Okay, so um, not that I need it, but we do need it. We need to uh, have our say. So are we going to try to duplicate other people? Am I going to try to be Jace? as a teacher because we are talking about teachers and the classroom okay what happens in the classroom am i going to be teaching the way jace is the way uh jane is teaching the way john teaches the way bill or someone else well am i no because we're all very different you'll be hearing a lot of presenters and all the MOOCs and you might feel, well, I'd like to be him. I'd like to be her. Oh, if I can only duplicate myself and be someone else. And the answer is, why? You know, why would anyone want to be someone else? And that often happens while we're listening to people. You know, we just look at them. We don't really hear what they're saying, but we just look at them. We admire them and we think, if only I could be them. And for teachers, 
that is a no-no. You got to find yourself, okay? And that's what I'm going and hopefully uh, what I was trying to do with the questions, the pre, and uh, what you're going to be doing in the post class uh, tasks, and that is finding yourself. That's right, Jason. You've got to find yourself. Okay, and that's Jace the rapper. Now, the other day, I had a really, really difficult class, and I found myself rapping. I kind of put myself, and I said, okay, Nellie, you're Jace now. And I did. <laughs> and you know what? It wasn't so bad. So we're great at mimicking others, but that's not what it's about, okay? It's not about mimicking anyone. It's being authentic. And the more authentic we are as teachers in the classroom, the easier our lives will be. And the easier, that's right, duet, the easier it'll be for us to connect with our students. And you all mentioned communication, the importance of listening is to connect. We connect when we listen, not when we speak. We connect when we listen. You know what? You don't even have to speak. You can listen to the person, and I think someone also mentioned this, without their talking at all. You know, those silent moments when no one is saying anything? How do you feel when someone is silent? You ask your class a question and they're silent. No one says a word. Complete silence in the class. What do you do? You feel embarrassed? You are frustrated? You feel angry? Look at all that. Sad. Shy. Oh my gosh. Why? Ah, oh, there, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Why? Why would you feel the silence bored? Oh my gosh, inhibited. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So I would presume that most of us feel uncomfortable with silence. And yet they say silence is golden. Why do we feel uncomfortable? What's wrong with silence? Something is wrong. Oh, Maria loves silence. Hooray. Yes. That's the point. You see, when there's silence in a conversation um, in the family or uh, with your friend, how do you generally feel when you're in a conversation with a friend, someone that uh, you're comfortable with, and there is silence? How do you feel out of the classroom? Do you feel good? Is it okay? Comfortable? It's okay. All right. It's okay. But in the classroom, oh my gosh. Okay, so there is a difference. Why? Why should there be a difference? Okay. Um, you don't like silence in the family. Well, I'll tell you about my daughter. My daughter was on her way to China. Okay, this was in Victoria at the airport. And I was on my way to Toronto. And she was, I guess, a bit stressed about going all the way to China. Uh, this was like uh, at the Olympics. And, um, and she said, and I kept talking because, you know, I, 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 I wanted to, um, you know, fill in the gaps. So she said to me, Mom, could you please not talk so much? And I said, what? I'm just trying to keep a conversation. She says, Mom. I love to be next to you without your talking so much. Okay, this is a true situation. 
And I learned a lot from that. I learned that silence for some people is very important. Think of our students, okay, uh, who are silent and we keep wanting them to say something when actually they're, they're very happy. All right, so maybe being silent is not such a bad thing, all right? So we have to mimic the real world, and the real world has silent moments. And in the classroom, it's the same way. So that's about silence and the whole person. So who are our students? Who are our listeners? Who are they? Okay, they're not just people who, you know, give answers, are they? You know, how do you view your students? You know, we often forget that actually, you know, there's more to them than their role as students. Forget about us, that we, we're human too. But being human, you know, it's not just the physical, the outside of the person. It's the inside, the listener, okay? And they're listening and they're hearing themselves too. Looks like uh, Dr. Nelly Deutsch is experiencing some silent time right now. <laughs> but I don't think it was intentional. Yes, Dr. Nelly is silent. Unless this is uh, part of her uh, shtick here, part of her approach to this uh, lesson. <laughs> Dr. Nelly, you're silent, but you're not, your pose, your frozen pose here is not silent at all. There's a lot happening there. I'm going to check your settings. It looks like she's okay. Uh, she may want to go out and come back. Maybe it's a connection problem. <laughs> yes, a very uh, paradoxically, very animated, silent pose we have going here for Dr. Nelly. <laughs> she took her daughter's advice. Um, well, while we're waiting for Dr. Nelly, um, I wanted to actually just saw uh, Vanessa, Vanessa's making, writing these really long, uh, wonderful uh, uh, messages here. What she said, maybe we could talk about for just a moment, which is, what about teaching our students to be good listeners uh, for the world? Because I think one of the most important you know, 21st century skills, as we often talk about them, uh, is the fact that we need to prepare young folks to be familiar with more uh, diverse cultures and be able to communicate more easily. Now, a lot of that they're doing on their own in some ways better than us old folks if they're connected in social media and so forth. But uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not an intuitive thing for everybody to be able to have that skill. What can we do to make our students not just good listeners in the classroom uh, to their fa family and friends, but out on the world stage? So any ideas? Social media helps break that down. For sure. You can't hear anything now, even me? Uh-oh. Can other people hear and see me? Yes. Uh, what about listening on the world stage? What, what do you think? Because, you know, some people on Facebook, they're good listeners, and some are not. <laughs> some people, uh, if they do online... Uh, learning or communication are, are good listeners and some are. What do you think is important that we need to do? Oh, uh, you disappeared, so I made some, I made some funny yeah, jokes. Yeah, that was our show. Jeez, they were supposed to have some silent moments. Are you kidding me? No, I'm, do I ever kid? <laughs> Uh, I, 
I, I wasted your time. Time. I wasted your valuable time while you were gone to to make make jokes as usual about how no, but how you decided to get you decided to get super <laughs> silent on us, but you no, left us with I this post. Yeah, well, you'll be able so really, to get the. Uh, well, it didn't look like you were silent. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened. Um, you're going to get all this in the recording because I'm recording this <laughs> through Camtasia. So uh, you'll get the recording, uh, the YouTube recording, and then you'll see what happened. All right, so there's a mystery for you. Okay, yeah, but the we'll idea see. is yeah, to let you know, got a lot of stuff Yeah. I got a lot of, yeah. Well, I, I, did they have a bit I of... Tried, I tried to, I tried to... No, so I'm sorry. I filled it up with a question. I, I, I took a question that Vanessa, not a question, but Vanessa put up something I thought was very interesting, and I find very interesting, so I decided to ask it while you were gone, which is, as people are, as we are in more and more, as we need more and more to communicate and listen outside of just our families and schools on the world stage, you know, especially through social media, what does it mean to be a good listener in social media? But that's all, that could be a whole nother class in of itself. But uh, I thought that might be an interesting topic. Yeah. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> so the whole person, the whole person um, is a topic unto itself. And I think that in Andrew's book, Andrew, uh, could you write, if Andrew is still here, Andrew, could you write the name of your book? Because uh, Andrew's book really goes into uh, the whole person. Is he still here? Well, somebody could write his book, maybe. Uh, it's really, really important to um, allow silence uh, in conversation because you do listen to these spots and they are very important because how we fill them in will help you understand yourself a lot better. And my example with my daughter and the chitter chat that I was going through because I felt that she needed comfort. And I thought that I was comforting her by, you know, talking a lot. And it didn't do it. You know, it doesn't do it. So as a teacher, we are learners. At least I am. I learn a lot. And I think that most of us do. If you could just add in the chat box, give me a thumbs up, like a really big thumb, if you can make it really large here. Uh, you know, there's a number there you can make it. Let's see if you can make a bigger one. I don't know if you can. Uh, are you a learner? Okay, that's great. So I can, <laughs> what, Jason, you're not? I noticed that. Um, you're just testing my, my vision, eh? Well, okay, so I see most of you would probably Probably say that you are. You know, maybe even a few words you would say you are. You know, it's it's pretty obvious that teachers um, are great learners. Okay, they're great learners, and the reason that they're great learners is because that's what they do. Okay, they uh, they teach, and they have to get information in order to pass it on to their students. The question is, would you let your learners, your students, teach. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you would allow your students to take over. Take over. Yes, yes, yes. Jason, you're going to have to put your thumbs down there. Yes, yes. All right, so <laughs> so the answer is yes. Well, it's the same idea, okay? Do we learn 
when we teach or do we learn when we learn? Where is listening? Okay, do we learn when we listen or do we learn when we talk? And these were two of the indirect questions. Yeah, some of you said both. You talked about talking and listening as a process of learning. Okay, so most of you think that it's both. Anyone think? that it's only listening, that you only learn by listening to silence. But, all right, so think about it as we go, because you're going to be reflecting. You're going to take a survey, find out what kind of listener you really are, and then you're going to reflect. Okay, that's part of your post-class uh, task. Okay, so we're just trying to get you thinking. Um, one of the things that uh, I find very, very important in my life and uh, in the lives of uh, the people that I come in contact with and my students, and by the way, I've been teaching uh, from the age of four. I've had four-year-olds to, uh, I think my oldest student was 89 years old. Okay, so emotions are really a big part of that. And I cannot not, not tap into my students' feelings. I constantly watch them and try to figure out where they are, how they feel. Do any of you do that as well in your classes? Do you listen to your students' feelings? Yeah, I said a double negative, Jason. I said, I cannot not. In other words, I can't help myself. There's something in me that wants to tap into students' feelings. I don't even know if this is a good thing. Um, you know, it's just something that I feel that I, I have to be there. And uh, it keeps me occupied a lot. Okay. And as I look at their feelings and I ask them, you know, I, I try to find out what they're feeling. I, I also reflect on my own. In other words, how am I feeling about how they're feeling? And they might have a bad day. It has nothing to do with me. But they, yeah, it's their body language. Exactly. You walk into class and, and, and you know. You know, you kind of feel it. They had a bad day. Something happened in the class before. And, and, and I, I think of myself, too. Okay, and this is where action research comes in. How many of you have uh, conducted action research? Have you tried action research? Action, re action research is a system where you learn about yourself and your teaching, and you try to improve it. Oh, no, you haven't. All right. So um, you can look it up, find out more about it. It's really a wonderful way. It takes a bit of time, but I think it's worth it. Yes, thank you for making that large, Thomas. Yeah, action research. So it's really learning about ourselves, our students, but it's a very reflexive kind of process. What I want my students uh, to have during the time with me is to feel good. How many of you uh, want your students to feel good about themselves? Okay, give me a thumbs up. You really want your students to feel good. Yeah, okay. Um, and I think that's where the idea of an entertainer comes up you know most of us um, resort to entertainment when we you know watch our kids and 
well, they don't look too happy, doesn't matter what age. And then we start being funny and we try to uh, entertain them, right? Um, so we want our students to feel good about her, themselves, okay? And that makes us feel good, of course. We want them to gain confidence and um, that's where we come in and try to uh, work with them, okay? It's a two-way process. And let them realize that they're not alone, okay? We really care for our students. Okay, I think that's one of the um, key features of a teacher. It's someone that truly cares. I don't think anyone goes into a profession or stays in the profession unless they really, really care. All right, so yes, it, we want to give them a sense of belonging, feel confident in their skins, in themselves. Um, and, and I don't know if they do this in other uh, content areas, but I know that language teachers are very, very strong in the nurturing area. They, they really feel uh, very, very caring towards their students. I'm not sure if the math teachers care more than about numbers. I'm not sure that they're there. It's really important to um, have a presence in class and help our students develop their presence. And all this is part of language learning. And this is where JACE comes in and where our ideas overlap with the three R's. How many of you have heard of the three R's? Just give me a thumbs up or just what are the three R's? Okay, what are the three R's? Let's see if you've mastered the three R's. What are they? Oh, Lopez doesn't know the three R's. Can someone add the three R's for those who don't know what they are? <laughs> three R's. Relax, repeat. Very good, Sharon. Relax, repeat, remember. Now, these are magical words. They really, really are. And you know what? Um, I've had these ideas, and I'm sure you have too, but the way Jace captures them is magical because relaxing is the way. And I did conduct an action research project on reading comprehension tests and on anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety in the classroom. And a lot of this anxiety comes as a result of maybe TTT, teacher talking time. Important. And one of the ways that I have uh, practiced is mindfulness. And I do a lot of calming exercises, by the way. My students know how to sit properly, they know how to breathe and relax. I do a lot of <laughs> breathing, mindfulness, uh, meditative exercises in class. Sometimes when the class, just before the class begins because they're too hyper or uh, they've had a bad day or they've had a test or they're going to have a test. So anybody else do this in their classes? Anyone else do... Uh, exercises, breathing, uh, any kind of, no, no, never thought about it. Oh, you do, Dalel. That's great. Don't be afraid. It could be part of listening comprehension. In other words, uh, stand up, put your hands up. You know, breathing kind of yoga. There's a lot of yoga for um, for teachers. You know, for regular classes, you don't have to be a yoga teacher. They don't need to sit down. 
they can stand, they can breathe, you know, you can brain gym. Exactly, Maria. Yeah, they're and it's fun. It's fun because they enjoy yoga. I, I did some mindfulness on was like you change chairs, you can get them to walk around the chairs to raise their arms to stretch you know to do all kinds of you know um uh relaxing before the class begins and don't forget this is listening they, you know you get them to at different levels to listen to you and perform it really makes them feel good of course you can do with music right but um you want them to relax and music could relax if you know uh, the kind engineers are already there relaxed that's good if they're relaxed that's very good okay but um, I use the Alexander technique I don't know about your students but my students uh, have back problems any of your students have back problems? High school kids um, are constantly complaining. They're lying over the table. I can't take it. I can't sit anymore. I mean, they go nuts about, you know, they just can't sit. So what I do, you can look it up on the internet. I give them Alexander Technique uh, exercise. They learn to sit. They learn to stand. They learn to walk. And they love it. Well, that's because my background is in yoga, Reiki, and Qigong. And um, the reason I'm giving you all this, because everything I've said so far, remember, is about me. Okay, I'm giving you my perspective because of my background. All right, so this has been part of my background. I will go further and to say sports. I have had kids run around the building. I have taken them on runs around campus. Yes, okay, because I did a lot of long distance running. So what I do is I bring all my, you know, uh, past skills into the classroom. So I get them to do sports in class, competitions, and yeah, I did half a marathon. I'm still working towards a marathon. But long distance running is also part of my... Uh... All right, so let's get back to listening. Okay, we're talking about listening. And um, yes, it is. Thomas, I, I think a lot of you, I know many of you um, from chats and, and uh, discussions and so on. And I know that many of you are also involved in the whole person. And uh, this is important to you. So full attention. How do you show full attention? If you could just demonstrate now. I can't see you, but full attention. One second of full attention. The chat's moving. You cannot be in full attention if you're adding to the chat, okay? Um, <laughs> no typing, that's right, Tony. You cannot be in full attention if you're chatting. Okay, remember, we're talking about active listening. The whole person is involved in active listening and the chat box is still going. Jace. All right, so we could stop the chat, but that's not the idea. The chatter is going to go in your head. You're going to be constantly chatting, okay, whether it's in the chat box physically or, you know, in your head. So the idea is full attention, no chatting, all right? So how is this done? All right, not easy. Well, the first thing we do if we want to really listen to someone is let go let go of the keyboard okay let go
and allow the person who's talking to talk. Don't do anything. Just watch. Are you watching? Don't say anything. It's pretty hard, isn't it? All right. Next. Give space. Give me space. You're taking my space by writing in the chat, by, you know, chatting in our heads when someone is talking. We are not giving them space. So listening, fully listening, giving the other person your undivided, notice undivided attention, is letting go of yourself, watching the other person, giving them space. Okay. And letting them speak. That means no interruptions, of course, of any kind. I and took Nevis advice. I took Nevis advice. Disabled the chat. No, just, just... no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nevis, Nevis is a no. VIP. All right, I'll enable, I'll enable. No. They're going to be no. so mad. No, you cannot. No, it's a practice, Jace. It's active listening practice. It takes practice. You cannot force anybody to let go, watch, give space, let them speak. You cannot force it. It comes with practice, okay? And intention. You have to really want to. All right? So. Um, Feel free to use the chat box if you cannot give your undivided attention. Or you can try it and see what happens to you. Because that's what it's about. It's about learning about yourself through listening to someone else. And letting go, watching them, giving them space that you want. We want space. But it's giving the other person space and letting them speak. The next one, as I said, the fourth one and the most, the fifth, sorry, and the most important and difficult one is suspend evaluation. How in the world can we not give someone a grade? We're teachers, right? But even people, we are constantly evaluating one another we're giving them grades we're giving our, you know we're giving everybody grades somebody says oh that's brilliant okay brilliant uh wow you know woo wow in other words let's not do it when someone's talking try to suspend evaluating them and here think about your students no reaction i mean like not this is good this is bad just it is you know let's just listen to it and let it be okay this is really really hard and the last one is easy right ask to respond all right so which one you've got reddish purple well i don't know um what color that's brown and light and green. Which one is the easiest for you? If you could just write it down. Which one is easiest? Letting letting go, giving space, suspending evaluation, and watching, letting them speak, ask to respond. Which one is easier for you? You like the pink one, eh? I like it too. It goes with your name. Amy needs purple space watching light blue give space hmm. okay pay attention uh what does it say pay attention i don't see pay attention pay attention is not one of the um uh not one of the things here 
Okay, pay attention, Sina. Full attention is just uh, the whole thing. The whole thing is really full attention. So if you mean that you can do all of them at once, that's great. Here is not here. <laughs> Hopefully we can hear. All right, so these are um, the six, okay, key features of an active listener. And it's practice. It really does take practice. And there's a lot of value. Okay, we'll be discussing that in the uh, post task. There's a lot of value. Our teachers, now I'm going to go in as a teacher. As teachers, uh, I've been using technology since, um, I guess, the uh, late 80s, uh, early 90s. So it's been a long time. Um, and I use whatever I found on the internet. For homework, for classwork, for you name it. And the question is, do I use American um, audio and video or do I use British? Okay, that's always been a question with foreign language learners. Canadian, of course. <laughs> of course, Steve. Of course it's Canadian. But um, my students need to be exposed to everything, right? So uh, international English accents. Well, online, I found two really, really great uh, sites for audio. And this is for you. If you're interested, I don't know if you're familiar with it, with manythings.org. Any of you familiar with manythings.org? By the way, the PowerPoint presentation um, in the courseware can be clicked on. It's clickable. You can click on the images and you'll get the sites. Familiar? Are you familiar with uh, many things? Org. It's an old website. It's got great uh, audio for American. Notice here American stories, and you can use this with your students. Okay, if you're interested, uh, there are tales, American stories. There's Edgar Allan Poe, and there are lots of exercises. So this is an excellent website. Click on it in the courseware. Just go into. Another one uh, that has both American and British, it's divided into American and British. And isn't this amazing? Now you have a lot of uh, listening from beginners up to advanced. Again, this is manythings.org. And it's all completely free. Okay, super free. It's always been free. It'll always be free. Now this one. Is American. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. It's VOA News, also free. Okay, I stress the free because I really think the teachers, well, I can't afford to pay for anything, even if it's a little bit, because it all seems to, you know, pile up. So there's VOA News, uh, which is great. Okay, you've got audio, video, lessons, and practice. Your students. Students will love it. It's all there. All right. So the pre-class task. Okay. These were some of the questions. Your responses were amazing. Um, and I hope that uh, you've learned from them. I know I have. But in addition, I'd like to share. We've got questions. So I'd like to share. Uh, these books, one is The Wisdom of Listening, which is this one. By the way, I teach listening at Atlantic University, listening and dialogue. Okay, there's the uh, the wisdom book. There is the 
Donahue excellent books. Okay, um, I suggest you try to get them. There's the dialogue, amazing books. And here is the listening below the noise. And these are all very transformative. And notice the power of silence. Silence is a a conversation and listening. There's a lot of learning. There's a bit of uh, silence here, uh, which is important. Notice uh, there's no sound. The chat is going. People are responding. There's a great deal of value in this kind of silence, even in the chat box online. Hello, hello. I think uh, we're having one of those uh, silent moments again. Uh, on Nelly's side, what do you think? Am I going to get in trouble if I, if I don't let you? Do you have your silent time? <laughs> Probably. She's gone. <laughs> She'll be back. No, I don't see Nellie either. Nellie is not, not around. Nellie is, uh, I don't know what she's doing. She's listening. She's the listening lady. Nellie has lots of titles. Let's see, we have listening lady. We have jigsaw. jigsaw. What does Vanessa call her? Jigsaw woman or jigsaw lady? Uh, someone else is, um, you want me to add more time? You know what we can do? The listening lady, yeah, but there was something else too. A few more things. What was it? Uh, a couple other names I saw today. I know she's called the, the Moodle lady. Dr. D, Dr. N, Dr. Nelly. There were a couple other nicknames earlier though. Marathon woman, I don't know, some new ones. <laughs> Nelly the Natterer from Tom, Dancing Lady, Jigsaw, Jigsaw Lady for sure. Uh, I will add a little more time here. Let's see while we're waiting for the Jigsaw Lady. Uh, let me see here. Adding our time. Okay, so I've added a bit more time. Nelly will be back. From somebody. Does anyone know who this is? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm giving away where I am. I am in Philadelphia at Vicki Hollett's house and Jay's house. Um, I've been invited here to uh, make some videos and have Thanksgiving. So I'm in Philadelphia, yes. I just posted a picture of... Uh, maybe that's Nellie on the telephone. What do you think? Um, <laughs> I just posted a picture of uh, Nikki and me and... Uh, Nelly, in the little window. So we have three, three presenters for the price of one uh, picture I've just put up. 
This is a this is a long hiatus, even for Dr. Nelly. I mean, especially for Dr. Nelly. She's usually right back in here. So, um, uh, yeah. I, you know what? I I was gonna keep it up. What are you doing here? Wait! I'd staged a coup d'état after that after that um. That that false uh, well, I had that mishap with the chat feed. You know, I was hoping I was gonna kind of take over your class now. I hope that's okay. Okay, you ready for the game? No, you can. Pre you ready for the game? <laughs> All right, are you ready? I'm ready for anything? You're keeping us. All right, are you ready? Oh, lady. All right, you ready? Okay, so here we go. All right, <laughs> this is called a sound quiz. You're gonna have to guess what the sound is. All right. Okay, are you ready, Jace? Just let me know yes, no, maybe. Yeah, I'm ready. Am I allowed to be here? I'm back. Do yeah, you want me to yeah. hear microphone, video? Yeah, I want you to be with me. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> Tell me if you're ready. Are you ready? I'm ready, spaghetti. All right, here goes. It's coming, so. Were you able to hear that so far? A little soft. Oh, yeah? Uh, it was too soft for me. All right. Pump it up. Uh, okay, so let me try again. Okay, are you ready? All right. So uh, let me do that. Okay, 100%. Ready. Okay, here it comes. What was that? Did you hear that? Jace, did you hear it? Yeah. Is this just for okay. me or everybody else? Very, okay, very yeah. slightly. Uh, very slightly. I wanted to ask yes. this chat box. What do they think it is? Okay, what do you think this is? Here it goes again. Okay, let's do it again. Let's play it. Did you hear what that yeah, was? Maybe, maybe, maybe some kind of uh, stopwatch or... No. No? No. Any other guesses? Any other guess? We got birds, no. crickets, clock. No. What else do we have? All right. So More listen, cricket gonna, guesses? Yeah, we don't have time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Add it to the chat box. This is great for your students. Okay, just something that I think you'll find interesting. There it is. There's the uh, the link to it, and it's it's a very old show, but um, I think you'll like it. That was toast, by the way. For those who didn't guess, uh, that was toast. You know, when the toast oh. burns, sometimes have you ever burned toast? Never. You never burned toast. Not the toaster, Jace. Toast. No? You never made toast? You don't know what a toast is? Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but what, where's the noise? I think how you're talking you to them. <laughs> how, do you, right. how do you scrape the no? The, uh, how do you scrape the, the burnt part of the toast? That was the sound. Toast. Yeah, that was yeah. the sound. So what you do is you take your finger. Part. Not your finger. Your <laughs> the sound of fingernail. <laughs> nice. Pulling off. Uh, that's how everybody does it. Oh, you use a knife. Well, how do people do it? They use a you knife. Do? Okay. Well, so uh, this is silence 
from Jason's side. This is where Jason went for a silent moment. And I joined him for a little while. So this is chat time, time for the participants to speak, to chat, all right? So it is silent. You don't hear anything, but they're chatting, okay? So space for the participants. We're allowing you to do the chat, to talk. And they certainly are doing a great job at filling in the gaps. While Jace and I are out for our silent moments. So notice what everybody seems to be talking about. I'm wondering if you're hearing what's in the background. If you're wondering what it is, it's my neighbor's dog. Whenever the dog is left alone for just a little while, he really goes off like he is suffering. So uh, it's not me, it's the neighbor's dog. All right, so no worries if you heard that. Notice the conversation. And people are adding their input. Very, very important. Lots of information from the participants. If you look at the uh, timer, there is more time in the session, about seven minutes to go because the class was extended beyond the 60 minutes. When there's silence, we all react in different ways. And of course, the way we react depends on the situation. It doesn't say that that's how we are because that's how we react in a specific situation. And online silence in a chat box, in a live webinar such as this, really does allow the participants to take over in the chat box. Take a look at what you wrote. Leave the others. Let's suspend evaluation. Let's take a look at what we write in such situations. What happens to me as an individual?
And notice that I'm part of the chat as well. I'm also responding. So the speaker is actually in the chat, chatting or texting with the participants. But there's no sound. Everyone is on an equal footing in the chat box. And this is something that you might want to consider for your students. Having a whiteboard and a chat box and allowing them to interact and chat together at the same time. No listening, it's just texting. This can be done on Facebook and other social networks. So four minutes to go. Are you patient? Will you stick around? Did you stick around? Why did you stick around? What kept you in the conversation? What didn't keep you in the conversation? These are things that you might wish to reflect on about yourself. How important is sound? in your life yeah. and Chase no, is back. Can you hear me now? No, I don't think that's it. Uh, people are going in and out a lot. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Well, suspending evaluation is an art of its own. It's allowing someone to be without judging them. That's the suspension. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Yep, I'm right here. Here I am. Nelly can't see me. I don't know why. <laughs> it's it's just going in and out for everybody. Yeah, it's been going in and out for everybody. You left for a, a long time. You just didn't know you'd gone. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, it's strange. Okay, they, they saw something. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Uh, I don't know what happened. Yeah, we have uh, actually Rahman is in. So maybe a uh, should be suspended evaluation. Just give us all very, very low, low scores. Low score. No. No, no. Give me thumbs down to me. No, no, thumbs down. I'll take thumbs down. Thumbs down for me. No problem. <laughs> uh, Yes, it should be positive reinforcement as often as possible. <laughs> Dr. Nelly, I don't know if you can hear me or see me. You can. That's a clap. Okay. Hear you. Oh, 
say goodbye. Thank all of the teachers. <laughs> no, never goodbye. Thank you, all of you English language teachers around the world. I hear a really loud uh, alarm. And that's the end of the class. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it.